to the next session on finite element analysis. In this session, we are going to discuss about the significance of material properties in FEA. The material properties in FEA are crucial parameters that define how a material responds to various mechanical loads and environmental conditions. The significance of material properties lies in their influence on the behavior of structures and components under different loading conditions. Incorporating accurate material properties into the analysis is essential for obtaining realistic and reliable simulation results. Suppose if I am analyzing a bar which is fixed at one end and on the other end if you are applying some load, you want to figure out what is the deformation at the end where you have applied load. So suppose if the bar is made up of steel, then in that case you need to give proper values of its properties such as density, you will have to give its Young's modulus, Poisson's ratio, such that when the load is applied and there is deformation, you would get results which are correct because you have given the correct values of elasticity and Poisson's ratio. If you give a value which is wrong, then obviously you will end up getting wrong values of deformation. Here's how material properties are significant in FEA and how they are incorporated into the analysis. First, we'll talk about Young's modulus, that is elastic modulus or modulus of elasticity as you call it. Elastic modulus represents the stiffness of a material. Higher modulus values indicate a stiffer material. In FEA, the elastic modulus is used to describe the material's response to linear elastic deformation. The stiffness matrix of an element is influenced by the elastic modulus of the material. So the value of elastic modulus is extremely important. It is very important when you are going for a static or a dynamic analysis, especially structural analysis because you want to know what is the stress-free deformation and for that, the value of Young's modulus is extremely important as it would indicate whether your material is stiffer or not and whether it is elastic to the amount of load being applied such that it can deform and then get back to its original shape. So you just come to know about various aspects of the material when you know its value of elastic modulus. You can see here, this is the screen of an analysis which I have cropped for you. You can see that when you are talking about structural steel, you have to give the value of Young's modulus as you can see here. You can choose a particular unit and you can give the corresponding value. This is a static analysis screenshot that I have taken for you. The next property which is highly important for static or dynamic structural analysis is going to be Poisson's ratio. Poisson's ratio describes the lateral contraction of a material when subjected to actual deformation. It is a dimensionless quantity between minus 1 and 0.5. Poisson's ratio is used in FPA to account for the change in dimensions, contraction or expansion of a material when it is loaded. You can see here, again there is a screenshot of an analysis. Poisson's ratio is another property of this material structural steel which I have incorporated. And this is a static structure analysis from where I have taken the screenshot such that I can use this material. So 0.3 is less than 0.5 and it indicates the amount of elasticity of steel which is good enough which means if there is a change in one dimension say the length there will be some other change in the diameter to compensate for the increase in length. For example if there is a tensile load on the bar so when the bar extends the length is going to increase at the expense of the diameter. The third property that we are going to discuss is the density. The density of a material is crucial in dynamic analysis where the mass of the structure influences its response to acceleration. It is used to calculate the inertia effects and is essential in modal and transient analysis. So when we are doing these two types of analysis, we definitely need the density of the material. Apart from that, in dynamic analysis or in static analysis as well, you are going to see that density is a property which is definitely required 
for a particular material. As you can see here, the density of structural steel is 7850 kg per meter cube. The next important property are the thermal properties. For thermal analysis in FEA, material properties such as thermal conductivity, specific heat and thermal expansion coefficient are essential. These properties help simulate how a material responds to changes in temperature, including thermal expansion and heat conduction. So here you can see this is a screenshot of a thermal analysis. For structural steel, now the material property required is isotropic thermal conductivity which is 60.5 watt per meter degree Celsius. You can also have orthotropic thermal conductivity. Now I have not used orthotropic analysis. I have used isotropic material property itself such that the property of the material remains same along all the axis. Heel strength and ultimate strength. These properties define the material strength under weighting loading conditions. They are vital for analyzing plastic deformation and predicting the onset of yielding or failure. So again you can see here for the material structural steel, I am showing you the value of tensile yield strength, compressive yield strength, tensile ultimate strength and compressive ultimate strength. These are the properties which are to be incorporated if you want to see the fatigue or the failure in a material. Now this is an inbuilt material of axis that is structural steel. So these properties are already present. But if I have to create a new material, as you can see here, click here to add a new material. In this section, when you add it, you will have to give these properties from your end in case you want to see the factor of safety of the component that you are designing and analyzing with the help of a particular material. Next comes fatigue properties. In fatigue analysis, material properties related to cyclic loading such as fatigue strength and SN curves are important. These properties help predict the fatigue life of a structure subjected to repeated loading. As you can see here, this is again a screenshot of an analysis. Or this is a fatigue analysis which I have done. So in the solution part, you can see when you want to see the stress tool, you will have to give the value of tensile strength, ultimate and yield values or the compressive one. So you just got to give those values for a safety factor. And when you are going for fatigue tool, you will have these two properties incorporated, life and safety factor again. So for safety factor, you have already given the values. And for calculating life, you can see here, you can change the analysis type to say a stress life type. And the mean stress theory can also be changed. You can give the type of loading. And you can see here, this is showing you the type of analysis that is being done and the theory that is being used. Now here I have used Goodwin theory, so the Goodwin is highlighted and the rest of them are not. And this is the curve based on Goodwin theory. If you choose SN curve, again you can give the curve for the SN theory. So accordingly you can go for fatigue analysis. This is another important one, orthotropic or anisotropic properties. This is not generally used by FA analysts, but it is used in cases where you are going for, say, composite analysis or a material analysis which is having properties that are different in all the axes, say X, Y, and Z. In some cases, material exhibits different mechanical properties in different directions. FEA allows the incorporation of anisotropic or orthotropic material properties to accurately model such materials. Now again, I have taken a screenshot. As you can see, for structural steel, we have gone for isotropic material properties. If you want, you can also choose orthotropic material properties and you can go ahead. So this software gives you the flexibility to use either anisotropic or isotropic or orthotropic material properties. You can see here, linear elastic, all the three of them are present. Choose the one which suits your need. So let's talk about the key points of the session. Incorporating material properties in FEA is typically done by assigning these properties to each finite element or region within an element. The constitutive matrix which relates stresses to strains is influenced by the material properties. 
Additionally, material models such as isotropic, orthotropic, or anisotropic models are employed to capture the complex behavior of materials. Overall, accurate representation of material properties ensures that FE simulations provide realistic predictions of structure response and performance under various loading conditions. So with this, I end the session. I hope you have understood the lecture. If you have any doubts, please write to me in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon for latest video updates. See you in the next session. Thank you.